Hey guys, and today we're talking about the final release of this DJI FPV drone. This is gonna be like PlayStation 5, so you're gonna want to order these as fast as possible. I'll have the links right here as soon as stock comes in. Now, there's been a ton of leaks, so everybody already knows that it goes 33 miles per hour by default, but there's some modes that you can unlock not unlike the Tesla that you wish was sitting in your garage right now, um, <laughs> to go full manual or acro. So what you're really trying to decide is if this drone is for you. So there's gonna be a lot of videos coming out today and tomorrow about what it does, what the footage looks like, how it performs, will it be crashable, but I'm gonna help you break it down in five easy steps. Is this drone for you and who exactly it is for? Well, let's start off by saying, reiterating again, point one is the fact that it can do full acro mode, but you have to go through a series of unlocks in order to do it. It's buried between being able to take those training wheels, those safety features off. And that's because this drone really isn't built and meant for crashing. Even though if you fully take it off, it's supposedly gonna go closer to 60 something miles an hour, it's not recommended you take this on a race course. This is still more um, to be thought of as a quad that can do maneuvers, that can get footage, but those beautiful instrumentation like the camera and the gimbal are going to be not what you want to crash. Now, let's talk about that gimbal. This is not a three-way gimbal like you would find on a DJI Mavic 2. Now, that brings us to a few points. The camera angle can be changed on this. This looks like more of like a one axis that's not meant for stabilization. So all the stabilization that you're gonna see on the recorded 4K footage is going to be rock steady DJI's electronic image stabilization. It's kind of version of hyper smooth, which is what GoPro uses. Now, if you've seen the reviews and the footage with the Osmo Action, which is GoPro's action camera, now you are gonna get a little bit of a bump in resolution to your eyes if you're using that drone. You get 810p, that's very nice. But the other thing that you're gonna have to remember is the remote does not set up for manual acro mode by default. You're gonna have to adjust some of those things. It's set up more like a Mavic controller with both sides of the sticks self-centering. You don't want that on full level mode. You don't want the self-centering on your left or throttle stick. So you're gonna have to undo that. That's gonna be pretty easy to do. Now, the other notable thing is there is an emergency brake. If you can train yourself to hit that emergency brake, an emergency break it's an emergency make the car smell funny lover you will turn off manual mode instantaneously and it will go into full auto level mode and just say hovering now that's not really going to save you if you're hurtling towards the tree at 60 miles an hour and you try to hit that emergency brake six inches from a tree you're still gonna hit it but if you're going along at 30 or 40 miles an hour, you see something, instead of panicking and crashing immediately, you could let it go. And if you do have enough distance for it to slow itself down, you'll be good to go. What this is, guys, you can think of this as a gateway product. There are currently two, almost two different industries, even though they kind of overlap. They're the camera consumer product drone industries like the Mavics and the Inspires and the Phantoms. And then there is the FPV RC community, which are building up these systems, adding DJI's FPV system to it, building our own crafts or buying off the shelf pre-built and racing, crashing and getting excellent footage with a GoPro that way. Um, a lot of those Mavic users actually would like to try this, but until today, the barrier of entry has been you had to go dive down the deep chasm of ultra steep learning curve in order to learn all of the RC stuff associated with FPV before you could even turn on your remote. 
DJI is going to eliminate all that. This is going to be the democratization of FPV as a hobby. So you no longer do you have to go down a rabbit hole of buying chargers, batteries, lipos, tools, soldering irons, all of these things to get started. You don't have to go. DJI allows you to go straight past go and collect your $200. Well, they're gonna collect it from you. But once they do, you'll be able to do FPV in just a few clicks of a button. That's never been before possible. There's never been an entry point like this where you could just turn it on, learn to hover with the training wheels on, get the footage that you want, and then you're gonna be coming towards a path. You're either gonna choose, I want better footage, I don't care about crashing or diving buildings, and I'm gonna go down the Mavic camera drone path, or I wanna do more of this, I want possibly a different camera that's a little more crashable, and I wanna have this um, and have a lot of fun go down the FPV RC route. So this is a true gateway product, whereas before it didn't exist. You know, I could see not wanting to just go down hours and hours and hours of learning to try to figure out how to put together an FPV kit because it is kind of a long pain in the butt. You know, most of the people that are in FPV now are RC hobbyists and we will sit there working, tinkering, soldering for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. The other people that are in FPV are like mechanics, artists, skateboarders. What do all these people have in common? IT guys, what do they all have in common? They'll keep trying something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until they figure it out. And because of that is in our nature, you know, a skateboard is going to sit there doing that trick a million times until they get it. An IT guy is going to keep trying to troubleshoot that problem until they get it. But if we want the industry and the hobby to grow outside of that constraints, it has to be more accessible. We need somebody that's going to potentially really enjoy this hobby and this industry but may not have the patience to get started. And DJI has really opened a door for that. So if you know you wanna go down the hot rabbit hole of FPV, you may wanna actually do fun aerial acrobatic maneuvers. You could skip this and go straight um, to putting together an FPV kit. I'm gonna be putting out some new um, 2021 recommended kits to make that a little bit easier for you. But if you have zero experience or if you only have Mavic flying experience, and sorry to say guys, but if you only have Mavic experience, you have zero experience flying acro. Um, this is an excellent gateway for you because you can learn it, have that emergency brake functionality that will allow you to stay as safe as possible. Part of the reason why I got rid of my Phantom, when I first started getting in, introduced to drones, I just wanted to fly Phantom. But after I had taken really awesome footage of my entire neighborhood, I was like, what else do I do with this thing? And I didn't really want to fly it in a very fun way because I was deathly afraid of crashing it. Um, this allows you a little bit more peace of mind. Also, the price is not that much if you think about it. If you buy this DJI FPV combo, you get the goggles, which are $569. You get the radio, which would be about $300. That means that the drone itself only costs $400 to $450. And all of those other pieces of equipment are reusable should you decide to go down that FPV path. So what do you think? Hopefully this helps you decide if you wanna start here, if you wanna start there. If you are a Mavic DJI user and you've been wanting to go FPV but don't wanna to have to learn all about RC stuff, this is absolutely the product for you. If you are an FPV enthusiast and you wanna get into the DJI ecosystem, this is an excellent entry point into that and you can still use it on the FPV side. So really this appeals to two different markets and it's hoping to combine them to make one mega market. There was a time where you had to have your own mechanic in order to own an automobile, but Henry Ford had the idea of having a car in every driveway or garage. <laughs> They had the idea later on that every home would have a computer. The democratization of technology that started 
out as niche hobbies for enthusiasts at a certain point that paradigm shifts and then you have the accessibility across the board so we should not be afraid of it because we were the ones that welcomed and helped build this technology we should embrace it because it's going to be that much better for everyone not just new people but also for us this is going to be a very exciting next 12 to 18 months as we really see these two industries merge we're going to see a lot of new development um, for us on both sides of this really exciting times what do you think guys are you going to be buying it i'm going to have the links below where you can pre-order this thing right now this is going to be like playstation 5 so you're gonna want to order these as fast as possible i'll have the links right here as soon as stock comes in you'll be able to see which places have stock. I'm gonna keep those updated real time for the next few days. And of course, you can see the stock dropping in FPV sales alerts, Facebook group. If you want one of these things, don't think about it, just get it because I guarantee they're gonna be sold out for a bit. Thanks guys.